show you a little bit about what goes on here at the farm. Uh, I've got uh, some pictures that we'll look at. I've got some demonstrations that we're going to do here. Uh, and then we will we'll, uh, get back on the buses, we'll go out to the field, and uh, we'll do some digging in the dirt. Because once the field turns to the farm, it don't get a little dirty, right? So we're going to go out and we'll dig in the dirt a little bit, see what we can find. And then we'll come back here, uh, and if we have time, we'll do a little tour of some of the things that we do with the cover crop seed here. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll have uh, lunch, and uh, if uh, there's time, uh, everybody may get a chance to, to bottle feed a calf, too. So we'll see how much time we have for that. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, Jake, can shut these lights off, please. I'm just going to take you through some pictures of different things that we do on the farm throughout the year, just so you kind of have a little bit of an idea. Um, March and April, uh, the year kind of starts out, uh, the cows are having calves. Now, we don't have that many cows. We've only got about 30 cows, and most of them have had their calves uh, in March and April. And so right now, they're, they're out uh, grazing some cover crops, and we'll be taking them out to pasture like this uh, later on. But we do have one bottle calf. We had a cow that had a set of twins. And so a lot of times when they have twins, the cow is not able to feed both of them. So one of them usually gets taken off and we feed it with the bottle. So I think the guys are going to bring uh, him up and his name is, what's his name, Mr. Busby. Busby. So uh, April and May, the time that we're in right now, uh, you've probably seen people out in the field fertilizing, planting corn, doing things like that. This is just one of the pictures of uh, our tractors. Um, I'm not using this particular setup anymore, but the year that I had this, this was kind of fun to go down the road with. This is 100 feet long from the front of the tractor to the back of this tank. So it was like pulling a train down the road. And uh, when I came down the road with that thing, people pulled out over and got out of my way because that looked like a lot of stuff coming down the road. Uh, I'll be planting soybeans with this here uh, this week. Um, the seed goes in these tanks up here, there's a big fan, it blows the seed back and it, this unfolds and it comes out uh, the edges here, or off of each one of these. Um, planting corn, kind of the same way, this is one of our tractors, it has tracks on it, which is uh, a little bit different, you don't see a lot of them this way instead of tires, and the reason for that is, is it doesn't compact the soil quite as much. Um, here's a picture of our corn planter. Uh, again, the seed goes up here and then a big fan blows it through all these hoses. There's lots and lots of hoses and wires and cables uh, on a lot of this equipment. Um, this is 40 feet long. There is 32 rows across here. And so we can plant things every 15 inches. And it's all computer controlled and uh, it's pretty complicated and it's great when everything works. But there's so many wires and hoses and tubes that it's rare that we go through a day when everything works. A lot of times we have to stop and fix something. So when you're a farmer, you also have to be a pretty good repairman because there's always going to be something that's breaking or not working. Uh, I told you that it was computer controlled. And the way that works is on the tractor, there's, there's GPS receivers and, and radios. And they're sending signals up. This just shows what they're doing. It's, it's, uh, it's bouncing off satellites, and the satellite basically will tell us where we're at in the field. And uh, it tells us how fast we're going, and it will actually steer the tractor straight then. So we've got a little computer screen in the tractor. It tells us how fast we're going, how much, if we're doing seed or fertilizer, it tells us how much we're putting on. I can adjust the rates here if I want to put more seed or less seed on. We can do that, or I can even make a map on a computer, and this map will tell the planter where I want to have more seed and where I want to have less seed, and it tells it when to turn on, when to shut off, and when to plant more, and when to do less. So it's all pretty much computer controlled. Uh, in, in a new, and this isn't even, this tractor here is probably close to 15 years old, but a new tractor today probably has uh, at least six to eight computers that run it. Uh, and then when you put a planter on, there may be two or three more computers that run all that. So to be a farmer, you have to you have to have a pretty good understanding of electronics and computers and all that kind of stuff. 
we'll go back here. Uh, this is a, this is a close up of the planter, and what this little thing is right here uh, is this is it's called an air clutch. But what that does is it can turn on or turn off every single row unit. And so when we're planting and we're coming up on a field that's not straight, see like you can see here, um, these rows go this way, and notice how these rows each stop right here. There's, there's nothing planted in between there, so there's no double planted things. And the way that works is, is the, the computer and the GPS is drawing a map of what's been planted, and when these rows come up and the computer says this has already been planted, boom, it shuts that off. So it, it prevents it from planting any seed. Because if I have one bag of seed corn, anybody want to guess what one bag of seed corn can cost? So just a, like a 40 pound bag of corn. $100, that's a good guess. Any other guesses? $50. $50? Man, I wish you got something to tell me. <laughs> one bag of corn can cost as much as $350 to $400. Okay, so we don't want to waste that because that's a lot of money. So this type of technology where each of these rows will shut off when it's already come up on an area that's planted uh, can save us a lot of money. And so these maps are drawn out um, to, to help us do that and it helps um, not, not, grow, not uh, double plant anything like this. In the old days, before we had this, and uh, Mr. Pavelka can attest to this probably, these rows, they go all the way through here because there's no way of shutting it off because you have to keep driving to get these rows planted uh, when you're on something that's not straight like this. So on the crooked fields, it works really nice. This is just a picture of corn growing. This is what we want our fields to look like, and I'm gonna talk a lot about uh, how we farm that maybe is a little different than some of the farms that you may be familiar with. This is what we like to see. We don't like to see our soil. We like to always have it covered. And so this is wheat stubble from a previous year along with radishes and other types of cover crops. We'll be talking a lot more about that later. Uh, here's another picture of corn growing. This is in June. This is a field of corn from last year. You can see all of the stalks and the residue. And we don't go in and disc that down. We just leave that because this helps block the wind. It helps shade the soil. Uh, it helps catch more rain. And that's what some of these demonstrations will show you here. So we like to see all this residue from last year in the field. Uh, another picture, anybody know what these things are? Yes. It kind of looks like potatoes, but it's not potatoes. Any other guesses? Yes. Old corn? No, not old corn. This, this is an old corn stalk right here. But these things look out here that look like little bloated dead animals or something. Anybody got a guess what those are? Yes. What's that? Oh, manure. Oh, manure. That, that's a good guess. These, these are old radishes. And I'll show you some pictures of these radishes when they were growing. And this is what they look like the next year. Uh, we raise rye and triticale instead of wheat because we can sell that as cover crop seed. And the field that we're going to go look at is going to have rye growing in it. So you can kind of see it looks a lot like wheat, but it gets about five feet tall. So if you guys came back in like late June, you could walk out through these rye fields and it would be way over your head, which would be kind of fun. We'd see how many we actually got out of there. Uh, and then spraying, uh, we, you know, from now through a lot of the summer, uh, we do spraying to control weeds. And I, I wanted to show you, I've got a little video here that hopefully will work. Uh, it's, we, we have a, a red sprayer like this, but the video is, is about a John Deere sprayer. But it's just going to show you the, the same technology that turns on and off each row on the planter. We also have that on the sprayers. Let's see. I lost my mouse. <clears throat> so as the sprayer is going through the field, you can see over here what the computer shows, and then the over here, it's it's turning it on and off, and as he comes up to an area where he doesn't want it sprayed, it's turning each nozzle off one at a time. And so that's the type of map that it's going to show. And so this area right here, 
the farmer has drawn this on a map and said, I don't want to spray that because that's an area of grass. So as the sprayer comes across there, it boom, 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 it shuts off those nozzles. Here again, it shuts those nozzles off. So we don't get any spray in these areas. It automatically shuts it off at the end. And so this is exactly what it would look like inside the cab. This is, this is what a farmer would look at a lot of times. Um, you know, you may think it kind of looks like a video game or something. But uh, it, I guess in some ways it sort of is. But the computers and the technology are preventing us from spraying things where they shouldn't go, and it prevents it from double spraying, and it just shuts things off where it's needed and lets it run where it should be. Okay, so uh, you've all seen center pivots running, but we'll, uh, through July through September, we'll be putting a lot of water on. In fact, we're running some pivots right now because we've got some uh, triticale growing and uh, it needs drink, so we're actually running them now. Uh, harvesting in July, we'll harvest the wheat. And this particular year, we are harvesting wheat. Uh, this is called the stripper head, which is different than a lot of heads actually are cutting the wheat off. This, inside, inside this right here, inside this thing right here are a whole bunch of fingers that are spinning really fast and those fingers are just coming up and it's stripping the grain out and it's sucking it up into here and so this here has already been harvested but it's exactly the same height as this because I want to leave my straw standing because that's going to help save my soil later on and then we're planting soybeans the same day that we're harvesting the wheat in this particular picture there's another picture you can see that on the left it's been harvested and over here, clear up in the right hand corner, it hasn't been harvested, but there's no difference in the height. And, and again, that's, that's so my straw will last longer, and then we're right back in behind there planting the same day. We want to keep things growing as much as possible. That's what the soybeans look like later on then, coming up right through that wheat stuff. You can't always do that, but uh, there are certain times that we can, usually under a pivot. Uh, and then throughout the summer and part of the fall, we'll plant cover crops. And uh, basically what a cover crop is, is, you know, corn and soybeans and wheat, those things we harvest and we sell to, to the elevator and get money for. The cover crops, we plant them, but we don't harvest them. We just, we're planting it to help build up the soil. And we're feeding all of the animals that are in the soil. You guys know there's animals in the soil? Okay, good. Stuff. That's how I'm excited. So, of course, there's worms, and we'll, we'll go out and see if we can find some worms. But there's lots of things. If I was to take just this piece of soil right here, anybody want to guess how many living organisms are in this plot of soil? 2,000? 1,000? A lot. He's the closest. Yes. A hundred. There, there are more living organisms in this soil right here than all the people that are alive on the planet today. There's over 10 billion living organisms right here. Well, they may not be living anymore. I had it in the oven because I was drying it out. But when we go out and we look at the soil and we dig that up, you're going to be able to see the worms, but there's billions and billions of organisms bacteria and fungi and nematodes and all sorts of things in here that you can't see, but they're absolutely essential for plants to grow. So it'll be kind of fun. We'll go out and see what we can find. Uh, here's the picture, here's the radishes. You know, I showed you those that had kind of dried up before. That's what these look like when they're growing. And there's, uh, this is my, uh, my daughter when she was 18 months old, and that's my radish when it was three months old. <laughs> The radish is bigger than Elizabeth. That's just some pictures of cover crops growing. We grow all sorts of things. So I'm sure that, and again, Mr. Pavelka can probably attest to this, people probably say, what the heck are those Burns boys growing now? Because it's all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, sunflowers and um, uh, sedan and vetches and peas, we grow all sorts of weird stuff because it's good for the soil. And we'll see that. And we've even got some of these things 
Like this picture was taken in January. We scraped the snow aside, and we still got things growing. And anytime I've got something growing in the soil, uh, it's, it's important because if there's 10 billion living organisms in here, guess what? What does every single one of these organisms need to do? Well, it needs to make soil better. What, do, what, are, what are you going to do around noon today? Eat. Every single one of these things needs to eat. 10 billion. And that's just a fairly small piece of soil. I've got to feed them something, otherwise they're going to die. And so what feeds them is when a plant grows, the roots leak out different uh, exudates, different chemical compounds, and that's what this biology feeds on. And I'll show you a little video of that. Uh, a lot of times we'll turn cattle out and we'll graze these cover crops because there's lots of good food there for them. Harvesting, soybeans, I'll just go through some of these kind of fast. Uh, that's a picture of a combine harvesting soybeans. Harvesting corn. You guys have all seen combines out in the field doing that. And then the same computer, this is the exact same computer that we had for planting, and it would show us where we're planting. The exact same computer will also work in the combine, and what it's doing here is it's drawing us a map right here of the field, and it tells us where our best yields were. So the green is better than the yellow, and the red is not very good at all. So anywhere where we have these red areas, we've got to say, what was the problem there? How come we didn't have very good yields? And so these maps will help us make decisions then for the next year uh, as to how we should farm that field. Uh, corn harvest, that's just a picture that Sam took from the top of the auger. I'm going to go through these because we may get a little tour of this. We, we have a seed business. We sell a lot of these different seeds. So we keep about 70 different kinds of seed around. Uh, we mix it together and we ship it out. Um, I was just looking at, so far just this year, um, we've shipped to uh, probably about 45 states. We've sent seed to 45 different states already this year. So maybe by the end of the year we'll get all 50. Uh, we, we have sold seed to Hawaii and Alaska before. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can personally deliver those. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, but why do we use cover crops? A lot of people don't use cover crops. And I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about why we do it and why we're encouraging other people to do it. And it all goes back to we want to take a look at how God created plant communities and ecosystems. Have you guys studied ecosystems in science? Okay. Can anybody tell me what an ecosystem is? Uh, you can answer a couple, all right. Okay, it's an area where a plant or an animal lives. Yeah, very good. Um, I don't know how I would answer that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's everything involved in where a plant or an animal lives. So we want to look at how God created these plants and animals to live together. And what we see when you look at the native prairies, when you look at the, you know, where, where we haven't disturbed it, what you see, plants are growing together. You never see just one thing all growing by itself in nature. You see wide diversity. You'll see hundreds of different things. You'll see some things that, that will flower, some things that will grow tall, some things that will grow short, some things that grow early, and some things that grow late. But it's a great amount of diversity and things all growing together. And so that's what we want to try to emulate with our cover crops. Okay? Now, it's not exactly like these native systems. But that's what we're trying to get to. We want some things that will bloom, some things that grow tall, some things that are short, because that's how soil was designed, and that's how plants are supposed to grow. They, they like growing together, and, and uh, all of the, the animals, like this worm right there, it depends on that plant for its food. And if there's no plants, then there's not going to be all of these animals that I talked about in the soil. Okay, this is a picture of a root, and see all those things coming out from that root? That's actually a fungus. Okay, that's actually a fungus. Oh, and, and here, here's a, if anybody asks you, or you go home and ask your folks this, say, do you know what the largest living thing on the planet is? 
What do you think the largest living thing on the planet is? What's that? A fungi? You really think fungus is the largest living thing? Bigger than a tree? Bigger than a whale? This guy's smart. You're right. Yeah, most people would say you know, a redwood tree or something like that. But they measured a fungus that is hundreds of miles long. This stuff is incredible. And what this does is it will grow on the plant roots and, and they make a deal, okay? The fungus comes to the plant and says, hey, I tell you what, if you give me some of the sugars that you're producing, I'll go out here in the soil and I'll bring in nutrients. I'll bring in water, I'll bring in nitrogen, I'll bring in phosphorus, and then we'll trade. And that's exactly what they do. Now, they may not have that conversation, but that's what they do. That the fungus will bring in the nutrients, and in exchange, the plant roots give off the sugars that the fungus lives on. It's kind of cool. We always try to keep the soil covered. This is a picture of one of my neighbor's fields. Uh, that's not very impressive, okay? This was, uh, he did a lot of tillage here. And after a rain, you see all that shiny stuff? See all the shiny? That water actually is still standing 24 hours after the rain. Well, what should that water have done? It should soak down into the soil, right? Because otherwise, it's going to get lost. The, the sun's just going to evaporate away. And this is what our fields look like. Do you think there's any water standing here? Or did it all go down? It all went down into the soil, and that's what the soil's job is, is to hold that water. So we always want something growing. So here's corn growing where we, in fact, this is a, this is kind of a cool picture. This is an old radish right here, and we slice right through it, put a seed right down there, and this radish is growing right up from where that, or the, this corn plant is growing right out of that old radish, taking all the nutrients that it has stored. We always want something growing as much as possible. Okay, and don't worry about not being able to cure this. But this is a plant root, and these are the little uh, root hairs that are extending out. So as this, uh, this is magnified and then sped up uh, greatly. But these little root hairs go out, and then that's where you can see the little, there'll be a little bacteria, and there'll be a little fungus that's coming up here. And as these roots are leaking out these sugars, uh, all of this biology is going to be coming in. This is a this is a tip of a root growing, and it, it covers itself with kind of this little mucus shield. And these roots are incredibly powerful. They can uh, penetrate up to 2,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. And you can see all the these are uh, different uh, biological things that are feeding on these roots. And I'm not sure if these are bacteria or fungus, but they, they all are right around these roots. And as these bacteria, as they die, they're releasing the nutrients that these plant roots need. So it's really important that we have all this biology. Here you can see, uh, here's all the little root hairs, and here's all the little creatures swimming around. And actually, in the soil, all of these animals that I talked about, almost all of them swim. They're, they're aquatic animals. And so if you don't have any moisture in your soil, these things can't function. And they're so tiny that you don't need very much moisture, but they're actually swimming in here. And you can see the plant root growing here. So it's kind of cool. It's when you study these roots and the interaction with all the different soil biology, it's kind of cool how it all works together. Okay, so this is why we don't till the soil, because when you till the soil, this is what ha this happens. Uh, this is called erosion. You guys have probably studied soil erosion. That's when the water uh, or the wind takes your soil away, and we don't like that. Uh, so we saw these pictures already. We like to have the soil covered. This is, I scraped this away. Here's the soil. This is what was on top of it. And so I don't want to see my soil uncovered. I always want to see stuff on top of it. We, we can't always accomplish that because uh, we may have not uh, had a good crop year before. Or like this year, we have a lot of bare soil because the wind blew it away. They can turn the lights on. And with all the wind that we had, we had a lot of our soil that got blown away, or a lot of the residue that was on the soil uh, was blown away. So I'm going to do a couple demonstrations now.